On the line with us is Tim Canova. He is uh, running for the 23rd district in Florida uh, uh, in, the, in the primary against Debbie Wasserman Schultz, actually, uh, and presumably others. Um, and, and he is also a professor of law and public finance at Nova Southeastern University, Shepherd Broad College of Law. His website, Tim Canova, C-A-N-O-V-A dot com. Tim, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Tom. Very nice to be with you. So what are the what are the issues that you're hearing when you're out knocking on doors and talking to people and holding town hall meetings and things like this? What are the American people concerned about or the voters of Florida in particular? I think most concerned about the economy and, and the jobs market, mm -hmm. uh, which is really quite an indictment of the official unemployment rate uh, now under five percent. Uh, of course, that official unemployment rate doesn't count all these discouraged workers. Uh, people who have given up on looking for full-time work or millions of people who are working two or three part-time jobs and would like to find full-time work and, and can't. Uh, the, uh, the Labor Department, I believe, publishes something called the U6, um, uh, the, which is a, a wider uh, measure of unemployment or underemployment. And in my district, the U6 rate is about 11 percent, uh, so more than one out of 10 workers. And, you know, as a, as a professor, I've seen this for a long time where students are graduating deeply in debt and paying high interest rates and they just don't have a lot of great job opportunities and so many graduates are still living at home with their parents well after graduation. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a very bizarre situation that that um, that we found ourselves in. What is the solution in your mind? I, I've been saying for a long time that this generation needs a new deal. Uh, you take a look at how Franklin Roosevelt's administration responded to a, a similar kind of a crisis, a financial collapse and a jobs depression. And it was the public sector that led us out of that depression. And Lord knows we've got plenty of work to do as far as rebuilding the infrastructure and all other kinds of unmet social needs. Uh, the government should, the federal government should not have been having budget sequestrations and austerity. Uh, it really needed to put the kind of investments in to our economy and into the future um, that we saw happen uh, generations ago. Yeah, yeah. What you're you're one of the um, one of the more prominent progressives who are running for Congress right now. There's a number of, of you know, as ever teach I just won her primary yesterday, the day before yesterday. We had her on the program yesterday to say congratulations. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, you know, many of whom have been endorsed by Bernie, but, you know, there's many out there who haven't, who are still, you know, just, you know, absolutely progressive enough. What's your sense of the progressive movement inside the Democratic Party right now and the progressive movement as it may exist outside of the Democratic Party? Well, I think it's growing both inside and outside the party. And, of course, the, the real challenge for Democrats is to make sure that a lot of that progressive energy that's outside the party comes inside the party. I, I know that's stating the obvious, but it, it really is an important challenge right now, especially at this moment, uh, as the presidential campaign is uh, really, I was going to say coming to a conclusion, but in many ways coming to a head at the convention. Mm -hmm. um, I see progressives uh, running for office all over the country. I'm sure you see this as well. Um, and uh, certainly here in my district, we have an awful lot of uh, folks who are coming on board our campaign volunteering their time uh, here in Florida and also outside of Florida. So I, I do think that um, the progressive movement is on the rise in the party. It is the future of the party. So here you are, uh, you know, an average guy. I mean, you're you're a, a law professor, but, uh, you know, relatively speaking, you're not a you're not a billionaire. You're not a Donald Trump. You're not the heir to a political dynasty. You're not the great grandson of Mario Cuomo or something. Um, or, or one of the Kennedys, um, you're, you're an average guy in Florida, and you decided that you were going to run for Congress. What, as a as a as a bold progressive, to, to paraphrase Adam Green and his group, um, what what made you decide to do that? And what advice do you have for people who are listening who consider themselves progressives, who might be thinking about participating in the political process? but don't know what to do, don't know how to do it, and are, are, are probably many of them, you know, simply terrified by the whole thing, you know, just, you know, the, the whole process. What have you learned? What would you like to share? What would you say to them? Well, I got into this uh, because I, I really reached a level of uh, frustration 
Uh, you're right. I'm just an ordinary guy. Um, I certainly had been uh, uh, active politically, uh, lobbying uh, Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz last summer and, and the entire Florida congressional delegation, along with the Citizens Trade Campaign. And we were lobbying against the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And, and that really is what brought this frustration to a head. Now, this is not as a paid lobbyist. You were simply no. going in and speaking to them and saying. Exactly. When I say lobbying, yes. Yeah. Just as, as a citizen, we were all stepping up and, and trying to convince our delegation to, to vote against fast-tracking the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Yeah. And Wasserman Schultz was the only Democrat in the Florida House delegation to vote to fast track it. And we saw how much money she was taking from these big interests that, that wanted this terrible agreement. So it, it was a sense of frustration. And um, but also um, uh, uh, recognizing the possibilities that now existed. And I think Bernie Sanders really helped inspire this recognition, uh, not just for me personally, but for many others in this country. And to see this this 74 year old man putting it on the line and uh, gaining such traction uh, with his message and calling for others to step up. And, and I thought if he could do this, he needs others to step up to help with this movement. It's not one person that makes a movement. It's millions of people stepping up. Um, it, I, I'll admit that it was um, a nerve wracking decision to make. Uh, there are a lot of folks who will counsel against doing something like this. And you'll always hear uh, why it can't be done. Uh, but. I think it's important right now in this moment in time uh, for folks to step up and do things outside the box, outside of their comfort zone. Uh, change isn't going to come uh, by sitting on the sofa and cursing at the TV and bemoaning the state of our politics. It truly does require people to do things that they wouldn't have done, to be more active. And that includes running for office. It includes helping people running for office. Yeah. You know, that could take many forms. We've been very blessed to have over 120,000 donations now. Uh, it's not, not very typical, obviously, for a, a congressional candidate. Uh, but others are, are stepping up in phone banking and canvassing and walking door to door and spreading the message on so social media. Uh, all of these things have a cumulative effect, and it's really helped our campaign. Yeah, that's tremendous. So if somebody else is watching and they're thinking, you know, I've got a member of Congress uh, particularly if you've got, you know, one of these crazy Republicans. But, I, you know, I've got a member of Congress who I think I can do a better job than that person or I'm more progressive than that person. What do you do? You go to your local Democratic Party and you say, I'd like to sign up to run in, the, in a primary or I'd like to sign, you know, how, what's step one? No, I, I'm sorry to say that I don't think the establishment Democratic Party would be much help to most ordinary folks. And this has been the experience of a lot of people here in Florida dealing with the Florida Democratic Party and with the DNC at the national level and the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, that if you don't come to the table with millions of dollars uh, from your own personal fortune or your connections, uh, they really don't want to help you out much. Mm -hmm. I think when challenging an incumbent, it's best to challenge um, in a primary. I really think so. This is a, And that's because most of these districts have been gerrymandered and they're either safely Democratic or safely Republican. So, you know, a Republican who's upset with Wasserman Schultz can say, OK, I'm going to now run against Wasserman Schultz. But, you know, the cards will be stacked against that candidate in the general election, right. which this is why primary challenges are so crucial to reinvigorating our democracy. Um, you know, without money, it's tough to get traction. And I see candidates all the time that uh, don't have the good fortune that our campaign does. You know, our good fortune it comes from Wasserman Schultz failed leadership in a national level. Um, it has it has resulted in our, our, our good fortune of fundraising. Most folks don't have that. And it, it requires uh, a lot of um, volunteer energy to get a campaign going. And I do see it happening around here, uh, including in primaries. Um, in this day and age, it doesn't take much to, to file, to, to put out uh, a candidacy on the internet, a website, a Facebook page, and, and start organizing. So you file with the Secretary of State and you create your, your campaign page and and you're off to the races. Yeah, uh, I think actually the, the initial filing for me in January was with the Federal Election Commission. I see. And, and we launched a website, we connected it with Act Blue so that folks could go on the website and immediately click on and, and donate. Um, and, it, and, you know, with nothing else, I took $15,000 of my own money. And again, I'm not a wealthy guy. I rent a house. Uh, I had been saving up to try to buy a house. And I decided um, 
maybe some other time. Uh, so I took 15 grand of my savings and I, I put it into the campaign and, and uh, you know, crossed my fingers that it would get some traction and it did. But I do think these are the initial steps. And, you know, I've been reading about this brand new Congress initiative, which hopefully in two years will help a lot of other um, grassroots activists to step up and to pose primary challenges uh, in congressional and in Senate races. And hopefully the brand new Congress can help folks with the infrastructure for a campaign and walking th them through the steps. You know, as, a, as an educated person, as a lawyer, a law professor and somebody who has been around the block in politics, and I, I know plenty of folks who have been elected uh, from the state level to federal level, I certainly had people I could draw on for some advice, uh, which made it a little bit easier. Uh, there were also a lot of folks who were hanging up on me uh, when I was telling them what I, who I was thinking of running against. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, Tim Canova, progressive candidate for the 23rd District of Florida, a professor of law and public finance at Nova Southeastern University Shepherd Broad College of Law. Website Tim Canova, C A N O V A dot com. You can tweet him at, under, at Tim underscore, underscore Canova. Tim, thanks so much for being with us today. Good time. And, and best of luck in your, in your adventures and adventure. You're listening to Tom Hartman. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.